What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another King Japes video. Now, I'm super stoked because it's this time of the year. The clouds are starting to come back in. Fall is coming. All of the leaves are going to start falling on the ground and it's just going to be wonderful light for all photographers. So, man, I'm juiced. Now today, folks, I'm really stoked on this topic because it's something that I've wanted to cover for such a long time, but I've kind of started to run away from the idea of doing it because it's very hard to explain. But today I woke up and told myself, you know what, with some coffee and some inspiration, I'll be able to explain this and I'm going to try my absolute best to break it down as much as possible so that you guys can digest this very easily. And the topic we're going to be talking about today, folks, is how to push and pull your film. Pushing your film is something you hear a lot from the film photography community. But the trouble I had when starting out was trying to fully understand it. Today we're going to go over what pushing and pulling your film means, and I'll also show you guys the easiest way to do it. Anyways, before we get started with today's video, if you guys want to support my channel, all I ask that you guys do is drop a like down below and also comment and subscribe if you guys have any questions on anything that we cover in today's video. I'm going to try my absolute best to get back to you in the comment section down below. Okay, so pushing and pulling film. We're going to break them up into two different sections in the video. Now, what is pushing film exactly? Well, to put it into a situation, pushing film is generally done when a photographer has a lower ISO film for example, 400 ISO, and they treat that 400 ISO film like it's a higher ISO film, for example, 1600. And the way they kind of calculate that is by pushing it per stop. When we're talking about stops, essentially what you're doing is you're doubling the amount that you already have. So for example, if it's 400 ISO, if you double 400 ISO, that is gonna be 800. So 800 from 400 to 800 is one stop, and that is a one stop push. Now let's say you wanna push it two stops. Well, let's go back to box speed, 400 ISO. We have 400 to 800, again, that's one stop. And then we have 800 to 1600. From 400 to 1600 is a two stop push. All right, so I'm editing the video and I realized I never fully told you guys why people would want to push their film. And the reason why people will push their film is for one of a couple of different reasons. One, they need the extra light sensitivity from the 1600 ISO. So maybe they're going to be shooting at night or in darker situations. And two, generally, there's more contrast when you push film. Anyways, guys, those are the main two that I use it for. Let's get back to the video. But the reason why we do that is because you guys know this 1600 ISO film is a lot more sensitive to light than 400 ISO. You want to trick your camera's light meter into thinking you have a 1600 ISO film when you really have only 400 ISO. Now, how do you apply that into your camera? Well, let me break it down for you guys again. Here we go. This is the Minolta X700. It's a very, very basic camera. And this camera's ISO function is pretty much the same across all 35 millimeter SLRs. So let's start off here with the ISO wheel. Once you locate your ISO wheel, I want you guys to set your ISO wheel to 400 ISO. Once you set it to 400 ISO, your camera right now will expose for 400 ISO film. Now what I want you to do is I want you to push that to 1600 ISO. So 400 to 800, go ahead and adjust that. And then 800 to 1600. So now it's going to be tricked into metering for 1600 ISO. So everything moving forward, as long as this is positioned into 1600 ISO, your camera is going to expose for 1600 ISO film. But again, it's very important that you guys let the developers know that you pushed your film two stops from 400 to 1600. And the reason why is because when you push film, it's gonna sound weird, you're actually underexposing the negative. Because 400 ISO is a lot less sensitive than 1600 ISO, your camera is gonna be underexposing the negative the entire time. And so in trade to compensate, if you're shooting black and white film, for example, you're gonna need to put the film in the developer a lot longer so it's gonna kind of overexpose it in that process or if you're shooting color film you might need to sh uh, develop it in a different temperature so you know I would just say if it's your first time pushing film push it in camera let the developer know that you pushed it based off of how many stops you had and then just wait for your results to come back again 
very confusing, but that is how you push film. And that's honestly the only way I can describe it as simple as I could. So that is pushing. If you guys have any questions, again, I am more than happy to help you guys out in the comment section below. But now let's talk about pooling film. Now, there's pushing and there's pooling. And pooling film is probably the one that not many people talk about. And that's because pooling film is not needed. End of video. All right, but in all seriousness, pooling film is generally done when you overexpose your film. So let's say you have an 800 ISO film and you shoot it at 400 ISO. To compensate for that overexposure, you might want to pull your film. But in all reality, folks, if you overexpose your film by just one stop, I mean, it's not going to be a big issue. And most of the time, pooling film is not even necessary. And that's because color film has a great latitude. So even if you shoot it overexposed by one stop, it's still going to look really good. In fact, I do that a lot with my color films. Like... Portra 400, I always shoot it at 200. Lomo 800, I always shoot it at 400. So pulling film, you can do it, but is it always needed if it's like one stop overexposure? Not really, but if it's maybe like three stops, maybe four stops, then okay, yeah, maybe pooling film is necessary. So folks, that's the best way I can explain pushing and pooling film. Again, this is not a scientific way of explaining it. This is the easiest way that I could try my best to do. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like down below and also comment if you guys have any questions. If you guys aren't subscribed already, we make film photography videos and also street photography. I have a couple of cool street photography videos coming along, but I'm feeling good. I'm not sick anymore and I'm just glad to be back. Thank you guys for checking this video out and and as always, Minolta Gang. Whew.